From the depths of the ocean to the rainforest of the Amazon, many places on this planet are teeming with life, however small it may be. One of these environments is a swamp, basically a forested wetland found in an area of low elevation. But so much of the freaky things about swamps are what we can't see. Maybe it lurks in its depths or hides in the shadows. Maybe it's not hiding at all. But you might want to see these videos before you make your next visit. 15 Terrifying Things Found in Swamps Swamp Cat any given morning on the Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary Boardwalk in Naples, Florida usually guarantees sounds of birds and views of a sleepy alligator or two, even the odd snake. But recently, a rare creature has been making appearances. People visiting never expected to see a Florida panther. Imagine getting this close to such a huge cat. This gorgeous Florida panther seems to have unexpectedly found himself cornered while traveling around a corner on the boardwalk and quickly sped up to get away. The Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary wrote on its social media, The main way to tell a Florida panther from other subspecies of a mountain lion is by looking at the tail and back. Florida panthers have a crooked tail and a unique patch of fur on their back. Panthers are shy creatures, and this kind of encounter was a lucky and extremely rare experience. The Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary features 17 square miles of wetland with a 1.9-mile boardwalk. So for this to happen is unheard of normally. Florida panther sightings are unusual but no longer as rare as the sanctuary as staff and volunteer sightings have become more numerous. This was possibly too close for comfort. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Swamps are usually present along large rivers since their entire ecosystem depends on the fluctuations in the water level. Because of this, swamps are some of the most biodiverse areas on Earth, often harboring a variety of creatures including this. Using an oar, this boater has managed to pull out the deceased head of what looks like a green anaconda, a member of the boa family. South America's green anaconda is pound for pound the largest snake in the world. Its cousin is the reticulated python, the longest ever recorded measured in at a staggering 33 feet. That's more than half the length of a bowling lane and makes the snake longer than a giraffe is tall. And they love swamps. Throughout the years, swamps have been the subject of numerous horror stories with tales of swamp monsters. While most of these are not entirely true, there's no doubt that they're still home to some of the most scariest creatures in the world. Does this swamp thing qualify? Leave a comment and use the hashtag Sweet Topic. Biking with Gators for all our bikers out there, consider yourself warned. If you want to ride through Florida's Everglades, especially on the Temia Me Trail at the Shark Valley entrance, get used to seeing this, alligators. This trail carves a path right through gator territory. It's true that the southern end of Everglades National Park offers many more locations, a dozen hiking trails, camping and picnic areas, several outstanding kayak trails, and a greater variety of habitats but you have to keep an eye out for these massive reptiles. The wildlife seems used to humans and goes about its business just steps from visitors. Here, you may have to walk and bike around the alligators who sometimes sun themselves with body parts extending onto the trail. In the first mile of the trail on a sunny winter day, you'll likely count dozens of alligators. The bike trail through Shark Valley was constructed in 1946. To build the trail, workers dug a trench alongside the road and used the dirt to slightly elevate the path. The trench filled with water and it's become the perfect habitat for wildlife. In addition, this 15-mile bike trail is probably the best bike trail in South Florida. It's 20 feet wide and the only traffic is the park tram, which will pass you three or four times in an afternoon. Oh, and of course, some alligators. Lesser Sirens if you saw this in the water, you might think it's some sort of snake swimming towards you. But don't panic, it's an amphibian called a lesser siren. These slender beings have an elongated body ending in a tail. These amphibians have only one pair of forelimbs that are short in length and are composed of four digits. Their body is made up of a slimy exoskeleton and cartilaginous endoskeleton. Okay, they're just as scary as snakes, but still, the reason you don't see them so much is because the lesser siren is nocturnal, meaning it prefers the nighttime to keep busy. They spend most of their day hiding in the bottom of the water bodies in the mud and only come out during nighttime to feed. Native to the northern and Central American continent, 
The habitat of these amphibians can be found along coastal grooves, streams, ponds, ditches, and swamps. They're a totally aquatic organism, but they can survive drought seasons when their natural habitats get dried up and can live in the mud till it rains. They can survive in drought from several weeks to a year, but their longevity status is not known for now. This is mostly because of their unusual behavioral patterns. One may spot this amphibian wandering alone, but these salamanders usually live in large groups. <laughs> Sinkholes. This is what happens when a cavity opens up in the ground, especially in limestone bedrock caused by water erosion and providing a route for surface water to disappear. And where there's limestone bedrock anywhere in the world, sinkholes can happen. In Florida, the limestone bedrock is protected by a surface layer of sand and clay. Thus, when a sinkhole forms naturally, over centuries, sand and clay fill the void, creating a muddy depression. These depressions tend to evolve into swamps. However, when left alone for long stretches of time, swamps created by sinkholes have deepened and broadened into Florida's signature caves, estuaries, and wetlands well-known in the Everglades, but also common throughout the rest of the state. And occasionally, dramatic stuff like this happens. Sinkholes are most common in what geologists call karst terrain. These are regions where these types of rock below the land surface can naturally be dissolved by groundwater circulating through them. Florida, for instance, is an area largely underlain by limestone and is highly susceptible to sinkholes. Sinkholes are dangerous because the land usually stays intact for a period of time until the underground space just gets too big. If there's not enough support for the land, a sudden collapse can occur. <laughs> megalodon Tooth The megalodon, which went extinct millions of years ago, was the largest shark ever to prowl the oceans and one of the largest fish on record. The scientific name literally means giant tooth and for good reason. Its massive teeth are almost three times larger than the teeth of a modern great white shark. So, what are they doing in swamps? Millions of years ago, when T. rex and triceratops were roaming the earth, most of this part of the USA was covered by ocean. Back then, sharks patrolling the waters were just like the modern ones, just very, very big, but still losing thousands of teeth in their lifetime. Here, the teeth were covered with sand and fossilized over millions of years. The megalodon shark's fossilized bones and teeth give scientists major clues about what the creatures were like and when they died off. And you can find these ancient teeth in many Florida swamps along with other fossils too. Now, fast forward to today, you have creeks, rivers, and breaking waves eroding all the ancient sediments and topsoil, exposing what was deposited on the ancient ocean floor and plains millions of years ago. So yeah, you can find giant shark's teeth while the popular 2018 movie, The Meg, pits modern humans against an enormous megalodon shark, the beast died out before humans even evolved. But their teeth remain. <laughs> Gharials Once a widespread predator, this strange, skinny-jawed reptile is now restricted to a handful of Nepalese and northern Indian rivers and swamps. The gharial is in the crocodile order that some strange features compared to its relatives. Its jaws are very long and very slender and packed with teeth. Though the animal looks fierce, especially when its mouth is open, it's not dangerous to humans unless it's threatened. The name, Gario, was inspired by a type of pot. When a male of these species gets to be around 10 years old, a bulbous knot will start to emerge just behind his nose, called a gara. It's descended from the Hindi word gara, which means pot, essentially. The animal is one of the largest crocodilians too. At around 11 to 14 and a half feet long, females are much smaller than the males, which typically range from 16 to 19 and a half feet. Some monstrous 21-foot male specimens have been documented. Such huge individuals can weigh a whopping 1,500 pounds, making them some of the heaviest reptiles on Earth. For millennia, they patrolled the rivers of Pakistan, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and Bhutan. But over the past century, they've gone extinct in all four countries. Swamp Rats With its maze of swamps, bayous, and marshes, southern Louisiana is a place where alligators laze with one eye open. Egrets and herons fly among Spanish moss and where oak trees sprawl. It's a place of great natural beauty, but this habitat is being eaten away by the swamp rat, the nutria rat, and they eat the roots of vegetation and swamps to the point that they have no chance of growing back. 
They can eat large swaths of marshes overnight, leaving open water in their path. They were first brought to the region from South America by fur farmers in the late 19th century. But when the fur industry crashed in the 1980s, so did the system for population control of swamp rats. The animals, which breed rapidly, took over the coastal wetlands and took to their new home easily, so easily that their numbers exploded across southern Louisiana. About the size of a domestic cat, the animal has brown fur, a beaver-like head, and long and destructive orange incisors. It's those teeth and the animal's desire for swamp vegetation that make them a pest. There's only so much hunters can do to stop the species whose females have only a four-month gestation period, allowing for three pregnancies a year with litters of an average of five animals. Curse of Manchac Swamp The story of this famous curse stands today as one of the most well-known Louisiana voodoo legends. What makes this swamp so famous is the fact that it is notoriously haunted. It's believed to be cursed by a woman known as Julia Brown, the so-called voodoo queen. Aunt Julia, as she was called when she lived, was the community healer for the tiny town near Manchac Swamp. One legend says that the locals imprisoned her on charges of witchcraft, and so shortly before she died, she cursed all the people in the area and the entire Manchac Swamp. And so the region was completely wiped out by the great storm of 1915 on the day of Brown's funeral. So, of course, it's rumored that Aunt Julia placed a voodoo curse on the town that leveled the community when she passed. Voodoo was a widely misunderstood faith in the early 20th century. Although voodoo priests are generally healers who believe in doing good in their communities, many perceive them to be practitioners of curses and black magic. Still, they say she frequently sat on her front porch and sang her premonitions. Her songs occasionally scared the locals, but her most famous song was one of her last. One day, I'm going to die and take the whole town with me. So, did she curse the town, or is it merely a folk story? <laughs> Invasion of the Burmese Pythons Native to Southeast Asia, pythons were first brought to the United States as exotic pets. When the exotic pet trade boomed in the 1980s, Florida became host to thousands of such snakes. And now, the non-native Burmese pythons have established a breeding population here and are one of the more concerning invasive species in the Everglades National Park. Because pythons can grow to such unmanageable sizes, it was inevitable that some owners were thought to release the snakes into the wild. But most experts believe the pythons established a reproducing population in the Everglades sometime after a hurricane devastated the state in August of 1992. It was during that storm that a python breeding facility was destroyed, releasing countless snakes into the nearby swamps. And today, severe mammal declines have been linked to these snakes. The mammals that have declined most significantly have been regularly found in the stomachs of Burmese pythons, and authorities have no idea how many pythons occupy the area, in large part because the Everglades are so hard to conduct surveys in, and the molted brown snakes blend well into the scrubby environment. Mysterious Swamp Monster Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster rank as the top two best-known monsters in the world, but since its debut, the Chupacabra has climbed to number three on those charts. Did you see that? The relative newcomer to the monster world is the go-to culprit for weird livestock deaths and creates a massive media stir whenever it's sighted. It started in 1995 in Puerto Rico, when dead, blood-drained goats began showing up around swamps. A newspaper printed an eyewitness description of a bipedal creature, four to five feet tall with spikes down its back, long, thin arms and legs, and an alien-like oblong head with red or black eyes. That depiction became associated with the mysterious chupacabra, and the reports of similar creatures began popping up throughout the Caribbean, in Latin America, Mexico, and the Florida swamps. Whatever is in the video is hard to tell if it's even one creature. It could be a couple of animals in hot pursuit, but it's pretty hard to tell. It does appear to have long legs and a long tail. Maybe it's a wendigo. The story of the wendigo comes from Native American folklore. It's typically described as a 15-foot tall beast with large eyes and claws, an emaciated frame, and an insatiable appetite for human flesh. Your guess is as good as ours here, so let's just hope that it's neither. This beast is described as a bayou-dwelling werewolf. It's a prominent figure in the folklore in this region, 
described as having a human body with the head of a wolf or a dog with glowing red eyes and razor sharp teeth. And people are keeping law officials in the southern USA very busy with so-called sightings of the famous Rougarou. Back in the thick, fall-covered swamplands is where people who live here say you'll find it. A common legend says that the Rougarou is under a spell and the curse is transferred from person to person. Yikes! However, often the storytelling about this so-called monster has been used to inspire fear and obedience. One such example is stories that have been told by elders to persuade children to behave. Despite the fact that it was originally a legend, there are still claimed sightings of the Rougarou to this day. The history is centuries old and has many different origins, but the earliest mention of the infamous mythical swamp stalker comes from medieval France, a legend that's been spread for many generations. In the Cajun legends, the creature is said to prowl the swamps around Acadiana and Greater New Orleans and the sugarcane fields and woodlands. Swamp Gas Also called Ignis Fatuus, Latin for foolish fire, these balls of light that are seen hovering over swamps and look similar to flickering lanterns. Several theories exist as to their cause, including bioluminescence, a glow caused by something natural like fireflies or fungus. Aliens, of course, have entered the debate as well. Another somewhat oddball theory is that barn owls might fly over swampy areas and reflect light from the moon or other sources off their white plumage, making it look like a bobbing lantern. However, one of the more accepted theories was more or less discovered by Alessandro Volta, who discovered methane in 1776. He believed that lightning mixed with the swamp gases caused the ghost lights. His theory was often disregarded because of the unlikeliness of spontaneous combustion and because the theory did not explain why swamp gas appeared to retreat when approached. But with technological advances, we can prove Volta's theory was more or less correct. This swamp gas develops from the breakdown of organic matter in persistently wet areas. It's believed that as the gases escape into the atmosphere, the methane mixes with the phosphens and creates the lights seen hovering over these swamps. Swamp Demons Living near the brackish marshes that make up this nature reserve in France, one of this artist's passions has always been to go into the swamp, walking along creaking wooden bridges, watching the landscape change with the ebb and flow of the tides that submerge part of the land. During one of these excursions, a fateful encounter took place, her encounter with swamp algae, and this is what she created. Strange primordial figures, human-like yet made of plants, emerge from the mud of the swamp. And artist Sophie's provocative swamp creatures continue to haunt the nature reserve in the Gulf of Morbihan. Having noticed that the texture of this seaweed performed a lot like human skin and that if left to dry, it assumed the consistency of fabric and her work, Homo algus took shape, literally. These creatures live with the rhythm of the tides. The wind dries and cracks their muddy skin. The colors, textures, and skin of creatures change with time, as well as the organic landscape in which they call home. According to this artist's mission statement, these unusual and frankly scary sculptures reflect our constant and intense dialogue with nature. This art looks right at home. Snake Neck Turtle Are you fascinated by reptiles like this? We are! These adorable critters are characterized by long necks that can bend and move in a serpentine fashion, and you can see nearly as long to slightly longer than the shell. The turtles are found in habitats like any still or moving water body or in wetlands. They inhabit the waterways of Australia and southern New Guinea. They also possess the longest neck of any group of turtles in the world. The neck is so long that it cannot be retracted completely beneath the shell. The medium-sized animals are about 9.8 inches long, but mostly neck. They're carnivores and prey on fish, crustaceans, terrestrial insects, aquatic invertebrates, carrion, plankton, and more. When hiding from predators or stalking prey, the neck is folded against the body. When prey is close, the neck and head lunge forward and the animal opens its mouth and throat to create a vacuum. Water and prey are sucked into the mouth, which snaps shut. The mouth may then open slightly to allow water, but not the prey to escape. At times when conditions get too dry, they begin a long state of dormancy. They typically burrow into fallen leaves on the forest floor for an extended period of time until rain returns. And this turtle snakes its way back to the water. Dinosaur birds 
The words that best describe this bird is a phoenix crossed with a dinosaur, don't you think? That's what Hotsons look like with their lumpish bodies and spiked crests and blue faces. They can be seen squatting in the foliage of the Amazon in South America making chuffing noises. They're often described as living fossils and they certainly look like something that's remained unchanged since the Jurassic period. But their lineage isn't exactly that old, having branched off relatively recently from other birds like hawks and doves. Their wing claws are probably a feature that was lost and then regained, rather than a relic left over from the age of dinosaurs. But that's not the only thing a little weird about these birds. They smell really, really bad. This so-called stink bird reeks of fresh cow manure or sweet-smelling hay because of its unusual diet. The bird has a special digestive system to process the huge quantity of foliage it needs to provide enough energy. A meal takes up to 45 hours to pass through their systems. This is why these birds loaf around for up to 80% of the time. The unusual digestive system gives the bird an odor so unpleasant that it's rarely, if ever, hunted by humans for food. So, the next time you pass a swamp, you probably won't look at it the same after these videos. We certainly wouldn't. They're deceptively rich in history and potentially haunted. Just saying. But they're also full of life. So, if you're living for these clips, stick around for more.